first out of the M. Now techniques, we first out of the MS26 formula. So we have F prime over F squared plus minus A squared. Then you also have F prime over root A squared minus F squared. And then thirdly, you have the remaining one, which is basically F prime over A squared minus F squared. So again, these three formulas are your MS26, just like the fourth one, which is all the trigos that are combined into one. So let's write too much. So you have F prime times tangent FX or cotangent FX or cosecant FX or secant FX. So all these four formulas are found in your MF26. Under exponentials, we have the very generic formula. If you have F prime X times E power FX, then you'll get E FX plus C. Logarithm, same thing. You have F prime over F, Therefore, the integral is simply ln modulus fx plus c. We're going to move on to the favorite one, trigonometry. So we are back to the basic three trigonometry that I learned in O levels, just that now it's more generic. So we have f prime sine fx would give you minus cosine fx plus c. If f prime x cosine fx dx, it would give you sine fx plus c. And lastly, our favorite, f prime x secant square fx would give you tangent fx plus c. Now we move on to the large group here, which is algebra, because there's a lot of forms that you need to know. So firstly, start with a simple one, ax plus b power n, so just simply increase the power by 1, divide by the new power and the derivative of the function a. Again, n cannot be minus 1, so when n equals to minus 1, it's basically the ln function, so it's basically ln ax plus b, then you must divide by the derivative inside, which is again a. Now let's say that we have f as an algebraic function, it's purely algebraic, so if we integrate fx with respect to x, then the technique is to integrate it term by term. So let's say your x power 4, x cubed, integrate term by term, and you're expanding if you need to. Now, we then move on to the even more generic form, which is f prime bracket fx power n, where fx is not limited to a linear uh, polynomial. So we just get increase the power by 1 and divide by the new power. Again, n cannot be minus 1. We now move on to the slightly tougher one, where you have gx over hx, right? So because it's a fraction, there's not really a directly integrable form. So what you should know first is that in order to proceed with the integration, you must make sure that the degree of g is less than the degree of h. If it isn't, right, then you must perform some manipulation, in this case, long division, to ensure that the degree, that whatever remaining you have, would have a smaller degree as a numerator and a higher degree in a denominator. Afterwards, sorry, just check for the possible forms that you can see inside. Firstly, because it's fraction, so the first thing you can think about is your f prime over f to get ln f plus c. Otherwise, f prime over f power n to give you f n minus 1 as a denominator n, 1 minus n on top. Basically, increase the power by 1 and divide by the new power. Otherwise, you can look at MF26 form, which is basically, again, considering your fractions, right? So these are the three fraction formulas that we saw just now. f prime over a squared plus minus f squared and f prime over f squared minus a squared. If there are... Man manipulate them, right? So if any of these five forms are possible, we might need to manipulate sometimes, right? So first technique you need to do is you look at the methods three to five, right? You see there are f square, right? So you need to complete the square. Or you need to do some splitting. So if you look at x minus two over half x squared minus x, you realize that I can split to x minus one over half x squared minus x to give me the f prime over f, and then I have to take away the minus one as well, which will give me the other form of between three and five. Otherwise, you have to use partial fractions first. Moving on to the two interesting techniques that you learned in JC2, which uh, JC, sorry, you learn by integration by parts, right? Short form for IBP, and the mantra being integrate one and then you differentiate the other. So let's say you are going to integrate u prime v dx. And then basically following the rule, right? You integrate one first to so integrate u prime to give you u, then you minus integrate sign. Now you differentiate the other, aka differentiate v to give you v prime. And then ultimately you get integrate u v prime at the end. Next up is integration by substitution. So let's say I'm going to integrate uh, for some function fx, and then I have the substitution of x, uh, gx, or hx, or hu, sorry, you can't be the same one. So either hu or whatever, then you substitute all the x in the function with the substitution, not for it to multiply, but the derivative of the substitution dx du. First up in our application, we have definite integrals. Basically, now we have limits in our integration. So let's say from A to B. So how do you apply this is simply, we let integrating fx be gx plus c. Basically, when we apply the limits, it's simply just square bracket gx, ba, donate the constant c, and then apply the limits to give us gb minus ga. To find area between the curve and the axis, so let's say we have this cubic graph, right? And we have positive area A and negative area B because a negative area B is below the x-axis and B is beyond between A and B. A is beyond between 
x equals to b to x equals to c. Therefore, to find area of a is simply integrating from b to c. Area of b though, because negative, must have a negative sign integrating a to b. We can also apply the negative sign to give us integrating b to a without the negative sign. If area of c, right, you notice is between the curve and the y-axis, we must find a function in terms of y, which is basically f inverse y, therefore integrating d to e. Continuing about area, we are now trying to find a way to actually find the area bounded between two curves. So we have y equals to gx and y equals to fx. And the area bound between them, well, let's just give it an area a. So the area bounded by these two curves, right, is basically the area a. So the general idea is that you take the area bounded by the higher graph, so higher graph being the higher value graph between the two regions, so in the case fx, minus away the lower graph in this region, which will be gx, right? So between the two intersection points, we should just name it x1 and x2. So we take x1 to x2 of fx minus x1 to x2 of gx. Because of the same limits, you can combine them into one integral of x1 to x2, fx minus gx. Moving on to integration modulus function, so we have, let's say we have modulus the entire function from a to b, is basically the area between the curve and the x-axis, or basically the area under the curve from x equals to a to x equals to b. For mod, so f mod x, right, let's say we integrate from minus a to b when a and b are positive, is basically taking the positive input, so 0 to a and 0 to b. Now we move on to our final application of integration, which is the volume of revolution. Because the volume of revolution can revolve about either axis, so we have revolving about the x-axis and the y-axis. For the h2 math method, we have the this method. And for the h2 further math method, which is also usable in h2 math, we have the shell method. For the this method, about the x-axis is pi y squared dx. For the y, for the y-axis, it will be pi x squared dy. For the shell method, about the x-axis, will be 2 pi x y dy. Y-axis, 2 pi x y dx. How do we use them directly? First, you draw lines drawn from the graph to either axis that you like, no, not necessarily be the axis of revolution. If the line drawn must only and fully encompass the region that you're rotating about. So how do you use this method if the lines are perpendicular to the axis of revolution? For the shell method, the lines drawn are parallel to the axis of revolution. All right, it's only the differentiating between the two methods is where the lines are perpendicular or parallel to the axis of revolution. If neither of these uh, criteria work, right? Then you must consider other stuff like rectangles or cylinders when rotated and try to use either method that's shown here. However, be warned, for any question, just use one method only.